YouTube. This is a quick video about the crash override network articles that some people involved in Gamergate are talking about. For those who don't know, crash override network is supposedly going to be an online anti-harassment task force created by Zoe Quinn and Alex Lifshitz. For those few who don't know who Zoe Quinn is, if Gamergate is World War I, she's Franz Ferdinand. The articles that kicked off the whole Gamergate movement were largely in response to the controversy surrounding Ms. Quinn. Now, Alex Lifshitz, from the one video I've seen of him, is a crazy person. So, the games and tech media decided to all publish articles about this anti-harassment project, and they published their articles all within a few days of each other. So many involved in Gamergate are trying to equate these articles to the Gamers Are Dead articles from August 28th, because these new articles are somehow evidence of collusion or corruption uh, due to the fact that they are about the same topic and came out around the same time. That argument is, in my opinion, complete bunk. Crash Override Network and the fact that it was created in part by Quinn is newsworthy. People want to hear about it. It's relevant, and I have no problem if every single tech site writes about it. The problem I do have with these new articles is that, and the problem that they have in common with the Gamers Are Dead articles, is the lack of diversity of opinion among them. Now, I'm not saying that this lack of diversity is due to corruption or collusion. It might be, I don't know. What is the problem is that nearly every single tech site is showing a clear pro Quinn, anti Gamergate bias. This kind of thing is the reason I support Gamergate. It's one thing for a particular subset of the media to all be biased in some way. For them to have the exact same bias is completely unacceptable. It's a symptom of a much larger problem. The media of a population is supposed to be a reflection of that population. For the media to all have the same bias is reminiscent of fascism and totalitarianism. This Orwellian behavior by the media is frankly disturbing, and this is just the latest of many, many examples. Anyways, I always like to end my videos with something positive, so here you go. The only good thing about the media being uniformly biased is that you do not need to use them as a source of information. In the modern world, there are plenty of ways to get news. YouTube and Twitter are two of my personal favorite sources of info about things I care about. It's not that hard to end up with a customized feed of news from sources you trust who only talk about things you care about. If a news source is not even trying to be objective and is not offering a variety of opinions, simply stop giving them your clicks. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for listening. Comment, like, or subscribe as you see fit, and I wish you all the best.